how champion experience or games played can affect win rate and stuff like that. So I wanted to do this video. Remember to comment what you think about these picks or what top 10 I should do next to be featured in a future video. Let's kick this off at number 10 with Thresh. He's probably one of the easier champions to pick up on this video, like you can play and do okay, even if you're not too experienced. The difficulty becomes because his whole set of abilities can be used in so many ways. He can use them defensively or offensively, depending on the situation. He's just very flexible. There are also a ton of combos that you can pull off and not all of them are easy to do or even to know that they exist But it's all about knowing when to use which for example You can walk in one direction and hook in another to fool people You can flay box hook combo to pull them into a wall for the extra damage And we all know and love the hook into flying lantern combo that we've seen people pull off There is a huge difference between a new thresh and an experienced one You can have such a big impact and pull off so many cool plays if you've mastered him We're gonna be taking a nice little magical journey onto our number nine spot. Bard is similar to Thresh in a lot of ways, except his kit is much simpler as a whole. It's just more about using it in the correct way. We've all seen Bard players screw up entire team fights with a bad ultimate. It's actually very difficult to use it in a fight correctly. In the lane phase, you only have one offensive spell. It's great, it does good damage and it can stun, but once you've done that, you basically have nothing left, so you have to use it properly. His crazy stuns hitting a minion and then you can set up kills, he can magical journey creative ganks through walls, and he can even just ultimate to hold people in place, disable towers, or disable part of your team. If you use his kit properly, it's actually insane how much impact he can have in a game. He can constantly snowball, roam well, and you're never safe because walls just don't exist for his team. He can roll through one behind you at any moment. In a team fight, you only have your stun and your ultimate to really utilize. They're not the easiest thing to use properly, and if you don't, you'll do nothing at all. Moving on to number 8, one of my favourite champions with Syndra. According to champion.gg, last season new Syndra players had a 42% win rate and ones with over 50 games had a 52% win rate. That's actually a really big jump, like remember OP champions are normally considered OP when they're creeping into the 54-55% to 55 win rates and that just about sums up Syndra in a nutshell. When you first play her she feels clunky, it doesn't feel right and you often end up not really doing too much. You have to be relatively close to do damage damage and you have no mobility whatsoever so that is pretty risky. A good Syndra player makes it very difficult to play against her. She has a huge long range stun, crazy burst and good sustain damage too. Landing her stun is not all that easy really and you have a lot of combos like QWE for example to throw a ball and stun instantly and even your ultimate you can use that and then stun to push like five balls at once and stun multiple people. Your main damage is from your Q and that is a weird skill shot to get used to because it's not instant and your ultimate scales off of how many balls you have out already which can be really hard to manage in a fight while worrying about everything else and trying not to die. Number 7 is Zed. He is easier than some here initially, but we're mainly looking at how difficult he actually is to properly master. Last season this guy had a crazy 58% win rate if you had over 125 games with him, and there's a good reason why. He is pretty fun to start with, that's always good, but he has so many different combos and things he can do with his shadows. Yes, the basic press R, E, Q is doable for most people, but what about your triple Q using another shadow, or jumping between them, or dodging stuff with your ultimate? Zed is melee to start with, not the easiest lane phase to get to grips with, but winnable in most cases if you know what you're doing. His item pathings are so varied and flexible depending on the game, but really it's knowing what to do which is hard anyway, and then actually having the mechanics to be able to pull that off so quickly. Anyway, let's tumble into our number 6 spot, we're actually going to be looking at an AD carry. Vayne is notorious for being a champion that everyone thinks is cool and fun to play and very rewarding, but so many people suck with her. She has a weakish lane phase, she can only really farm with auto attacks and has no abilities to fall back on. This is one of the biggest things actually that makes her difficult. She focuses purely on single target DPS with her auto attacks and has no abilities or long range stuff to use. 
In a fight, you have to put yourself in auto range to do anything. If you're not attacking someone, then you're not doing any damage. Unlike Lucian or Ezreal, who can hit from range and still have an impact while being really safe. This makes her a lot more difficult to play, but also extremely rewarding if you pull something off. Her focus on single target damage makes her great in a 1v1 situation, but in team fights, you are very vulnerable to area of effect damage because of how close you have to be. She has to constantly think about a lot of things, like how to get a stun with her condemn, use her stealth properly with their ultimate but a good vein player is so slippery does loads of damage and almost impossible to shut down we're gonna stick with ad carries to start off our top five and look at who i think is the hardest ad carry to play draven has his completely unique mechanic with his q and nothing from the rest of league really transfers to help you pick that up to start with eventually you will get to grips with it you'll aim it properly and be able to catch them in lane but in team fights it's so hard to manage that effectively firstly it's hard to look at who you're attacking dodge stuff not die attack move around and still aim your axes into spots where you can pick them up properly it's also hard because people can stop you moving they stun you they exhaust you they slow you and suddenly it's even harder you drop them and your dps goes down so much one of the reasons i think he's really hard to master is also because you can actually get three axes spinning at the same time if you're attacking fast enough and that is really another level of draven damage there is nothing really about his kit that is easy i guess but he's amazing when you learn him and definitely worth the time so at number four, I bet you didn't see this one coming and I'm sure Lee Sin didn't see this one coming either. It pains me to put him here because Fox Shop is a good Lee Sin player and I don't want to make his ego any bigger, but here we go. You only need to look at a good Lee Sin player like Gripex, Fox, Dardock or Rush from the LCS to see what is possible if you're a god with him. The basic stuff is not too bad. Q is a skill shot, sure. Ward hopping over walls and stuff is fine, but there are so many different advanced ways that you can use your abilities. The Insect is a well-known play now, and it's impressive, sure, but you can war jump and flash, you can kick flash to change direction, you can even queue to a different champion and war jump behind another to kick them back. There are just so many different things to Lee Sin, and that is why he's so high in this video. Sure, he's actually pretty difficult anyway. His combos aren't that easy to pull off, but the sheer volume of different things you can do means it takes so much time to learn, and honestly, I think you're always learning on Lee Sin. There's always a different way that you could do something, and that's that makes him one of the hardest champions in league to play. Top three time now, and all of these are very hard. Let's see if you guys can guess who they are. Let me know down below if you got these right or not. So Cassiopeia is the bane of solo queue. Whenever someone picks this champion, I get really sad because nine times out of 10, they are going to be terrible. She is a very hard champion to play mechanically and also knowledge wise too. You have to know what the right way of doing something is, but also actually be able to pull it off. You aren't a burst champion. You need time to kill people. And that is a much different play style to most. A lot like Syndra where you need to be constantly doing something not just pressing Q and waiting five seconds for it to come back up. Your Q isn't particularly easy to land and in team fights you'll often find Cassio players have no impact at all. The problem is you have low cooldown spells which you need to be using constantly. You also need to be moving in between them making sure you don't die, avoiding damage and deciding who to attack. That's a lot to think about. When a Cassio is good though they will absolutely crush games because they can do all of those things. They pump out so much damage and stun perfectly in team fights with their ultimate. This one I seriously doubt anyone will think of, but Echo is not easy to play at all. Most people think he's pretty bad right now, but win rate wise, he's awful for new players, but almost a 55% win rate for more experienced ones. Most of his difficulty, I'd say, comes from, well, the first thing is he's a low health mage and melee, which is not normally the best combo. Also, his damage isn't understood very well. His passive is where a lot of it comes from, plus his ultimate, which is another story. You have to think four seconds in advance with this guy to pull something off with his ultimate that you actually plan. If you can plan it properly, it's devastating, but you need to have that idea of what you're going to do before you do it to make it work. Your Q is an awkward skill shot to use properly. Your W as well, the shield area, can be really strong if aimed correctly, but also useless if you miss it. The fact that his kit is kind of based on predictions makes him very unreliable and hard to play for a new player to echo. Once you get used to him being melee and having to jump into fights, get used to those timers and have some experience your predictions and plans will be a lot better more effective and echo has a ton of damage especially if you build him hybrid 
So at number one, Azir is by far the hardest champion in League of Legends, in my opinion. For new players last season, he had one of the lowest win rates at like 40%. And even for people who had over 125 games with him, he's still only around 50%. Now you can argue that that is because he's just not a good champion and kind of, but really if you've ever played against a good Azir, you know how much damage this guy can do when played properly. Everything about him is hard. Like last hitting is weird because you have to use soul soldiers and that takes some time to get used to. It feels clunky, it's a unique mechanic and even if you're already a great mid player that is not easy to get used to. You're kind of like an AD carry mage, you have to just push out constant damage while staying safe and positioning is key. This is a weird thing though, it's not so much your positioning as a Zir, but the soldiers. You have to place them and move them in the right places in fights otherwise you won't do any damage. His combos are not easy like just running away or flying and then repositioning with Q or even like an insect with your ultimate. Late game this guy is 